morning. Happy Groovy Tuesday. Oh, how are we all doing today? I know I, I speak before, when we go live, I know it takes a while for people to trickle in, so I sort of repeat what I say at the beginning. But I can see we've got some lovely viewers already. Good morning, everybody who's watching. I'm sure I'll see some comments popping up in the in the morning, popping up on the right hand side of my screen. The lovely Lucy is in the building with you today. Um, hopefully you can hear me all okay. I will get an all clear from Lucy in a moment. Good morning, Sheila, from sunny Peterborough. Ah, when was I last in Peterborough? Oh yes, yesterday. <laughs> Good morning, Yvonne. I hope everybody is well. It's a beautiful sunny day down here in Edenbridge in Kent. What's the weather like where you are? Good morning, Anja. Elaine, Elaine. Good morning, good morning. Oh, so many friendly names appearing. Good morning, Jill. You've got to pop off in 20 minutes to take the cake out of the oven. Oh, you didn't need to bake a cake for the occasion just because it's Groovy Tuesday. <laughs> is it chocolate? What type of cake is it? Let me know what type of cake it is. Good morning. Sunny in Sweden. Sweden, I could... Right, I'll apologise at the beginning of this hour if I get all tongue-tied and gobbledygook. Uh, <laughs> the brain is not quite in gear just yet. So, Terry, Kay, Janet, good morning, everybody. Lovely and sunny in East Yorkshire. Super, it looks as if most of you have got some beautiful sunshine. And for me, when it shines and it's... It's nice and sunny and gives you an instant lift and puts a smile on the face. So, um, yes, happy Groovy Tuesday. This week has come around quicker than I expected, <laughs> shall we say. But um, I know we've been having fun the last couple of weeks in the Groovy Tuesday. I'm pleased to say that the lovely Linda Williams will be back with us next week for our Pergamano Summer School. And um, we're continuing on our journey of using the multi-needle tools. So, um, yeah, I've really missed having someone. I mean, I'm, obviously I'm chatting to everybody at home, but to hear back from somebody <laughs> like the lovely Linda, um, I do miss that. So, um, so I'm really looking forward to next Tuesday. But we've still got a lot coming up this week, so um, we won't sort of rush this week through, we won't rush this week through too quickly. <laughs> it's going to be one of those mornings. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. There we go. The lovely Lucy's in the room. I'm hoping you can hear me. You must be, because you're telling me what the weather's like. So, um, yes, you can hear me. Sunny in Frinton, vacuum away, coffee made, ready for the next hour. Oh, thank you, Lisbeth. Do you want to bring the hoover around here? There's a bit of... So, right, okay, so what are we up to this week? So I thought what we'd have a look at this week would be um, how to finish off the cards that we make, especially parchment cards. And over the past, this the fourth week, so the previous three weeks, we had a look at colouring with the pencils, our Pergoline pencils. We had a look at colouring with our Perga colour pens. And then last week, we sort of went really back to basics with our Pico cutting. And we were looking at the three different types of scissors, the Perga cutters, the exclusives, and the ring lock. So if this is the first time tuning in, or you missed out on the previous couple of weeks, you can always check out our YouTube channel where you'll be able to catch up on all the previous episodes. We're currently at episode 28 of Groovy Tuesday. So there's lots for you to go back from. And I remember when we started back in the day, it was all about going back to basics and introducing you to the Groovy system and the starter kit and how to, to get on that little bus and go on that journey and build up the confidence and not to worry if it went wrong because at the end of the day it's just a piece of parchment so i can just see yes we can hear you thanks lucy okay 
So then we had the fantastic Pergamano summer school with Linda Williams. And we had a number of weeks where she was guiding us through different tips and different techniques on how to use the multi-needle tools. And to accompany her book, which I probably haven't got to hand, this place looks as if someone's just dropped a bomb. Oh no, here it is. I'm sort of prepared, but not. I haven't even unpacked the stuff from the tip that I have. It's sitting on the table over there, and I think I've got everything that I need for today's session. So I've been looking at let's have a look, Linda's Handbook for Multi-Needle Tools, Volume 1. And in the Pergamano School, Linda's been guiding us through um, on how to use them. And it some people can sort of learn from reading and following pictures but some people like to see sort of like videos and hear talking so to have the book and to have the author herself the lovely linda williams has made a big difference and i've seen some of the beautiful work that you've created on groovy worldwide and clarity worldwide and using what you've learned from linda because again I'm, I'm terrible for this as well. I'll buy something like this. I'll buy the book because I, I really love the effect that you can get from it. And then you have a look at it and you have a read and you have a glance through and you have a bit of a play. And then you think, oh no, what am I doing? So to have the Pergamano school um, with the lovely Linda to verbally and visually guide us through the various different tools and the applications is fantastic. So Linda will be back again next week. I'll be joining Linda for that. But as I say, over the past couple of weeks, we've been, oh, don't want to, well, maybe do. We've been looking, we, we sort of took it back to basics so that people are thinking, oh, I don't want to go down the multi-needle tool yet. I'm not that far on that bus stop. Then we just sort of took it back and we had a couple of nice chilled hours. And so today, what I thought we'd have a look at, because I always, always get questions on, once we've done our piece of parchment art, how do we attach it? And there's loads of different, way we, different ways that we can do that. I'm gonna try and slow my speaking down. <laughs> so traditionally, and Linda showed us on one of the Pergamano sessions, parchment paper used to be attached to the card by stitching it on and because obviously it added a decorative feel to it or as Linda showed it I think I've got the card here let me or did I put it somewhere safe actually I think I put it somewhere safe so yeah maybe I'll have a look in a minute so Linda showed us how to stitch down the spine of the card to attach the parchment now I remember back in the day when we first started Groovy, the, there was only a couple of ways that I was aware of on how to do that. And that would be using brads, it would be um, using a glue runner, but then it showed through on the parchment, um, wrapping it round a piece of card. That's a, a really nice effect. So there was only a few ways that I was aware of on how to do it, and I wasn't going to go down the stitching route not at that stage. So I thought over the course of this hour, we'll sort of just chill out and we'll use brads. We're gonna use our fantastic corner punches because again, there's a little tips and tricks on the, the corner punches. We're gonna use some dies. We're gonna use our clarity tape runners. What else are we gonna use? Um, we'll do the wraparound technique. So to give you different options and so you can get different effects from it. Okay, so let me have a mouthful of coffee. So if you've got any of these bits and pieces, so if, for example, if I get, we'll go with the brads first. So for that, if you wanted to have a go whilst I'm showing you, you'll need your brads, you'll need a perforating mat, and you'll need your one needle bowl tool. Okay, as simple as that. That's all that's required for the brads. And there's a few tips and techniques that I can show you to make it so much more easier. Okay, so if you want to join in, get those little bits together. I mean, you don't have to, you can sort of just watch. Um, 
but it's all about sort of just giving you some some hints and tips and ideas and some inspiration and to listen to me waffle on for an hour talking gibberish because I think that's what it will be by the end of it. So I need to say a massive thank you if you um, joined the Clarity 28th birthday celebrations on the craft store over the past four days. Um, I hope you enjoyed what the demonstrations that Barbara showed us and that I brought to you and more importantly, the products. Um, it really was, see for me, today's session is along those lines because the products that we brought to you on the craft store was all about adding enhancements to what you already have and to sort of add finishing off, adding that little bit of elegance, for example. So on Friday, well, <laughs> we launched, I'm only gonna tease you with the circle ones because we are literally out of stock. So these were the beautiful um, nested circle doodle frame it dies. My favorites are the circles, okay. And so this one here, this, there's a set of three in the designs, okay. So we've got the frame it, then we have the aperture. So we've got the nested heart aperture, and we've also got the um, scallop aperture. And if you tuned into the shows, then you would have seen exactly how they work. But I thought I would use these today to show how you can attach, use the dies to attach your parchment, okay? So now what's that? I've just seen a big message come up from Sheila Williams. Let me just have a quick read. Okay, Sheila Williams, morning all, morning Lucy and Paul. What a busy weekend. I loved all the new products and have maxed out my account. Looking forward to trying all the new dies, groovy, stamps, etc. I'll eagerly, I'll be eagerly awaiting the postman in a week or so. Happy birthday, Clarity. Fab weekend. Thank you all very much. Well, thank you. Um, if it wasn't for the lovely viewers at home, then it wouldn't have been as successful as we hoped it had been. So um, a massive thank you. Um, and obviously everyone behind the scenes here at Clarity um, to enable us to bring you and the, the fantastic design team. The samples... Wow, okay. so I thought we'd have a look at the dies, and not necessarily just these dies, but again, it was it's all about adding those finishing touches. So I thought we'd start with the brads, okay? So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna work with my black 12 by 12 super foam, and let's have a look. We're gonna to go to the overhead, and what do I need for that? I need a little bit of artwork, here we go. This was the piece we worked on previously. Okay. I was hunting around in this bomb site, trying to find some little bits of artwork that we could use to demonstrate the different products. Okay. So we're going to go with this one. And then what I'm going to do, I also need, oh, bring my pink. I've, you know, I say how organized I am. I am, but I'm not because I don't think I put everything back in the slot, no, one needle bold, which means it's gonna be hiding at the back. There we go. At least it was in the bag. That's a good thing, isn't it? Oh, and I also need my craft knife. Okay, so we've got that, we've got that, one needle bold, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, first of all, you can see this was a piece that we created, one of our during one of our previous Groovy Tuesday episodes. And we can take that and we want, now want to pop it onto our card, okay? So to start off with, what I wanna do is just to trim this down. So I'm gonna work on my black mat and I'm going to take my Pergamano ruler. Now, let me check, this hasn't got my Groovy grip on it and I really don't want, slip while I'm doing this. So I know where my ruler is with my groovy grip. So just bear with me for a moment. There we go, has that one got it? Nope, not that one. I've got so many rulers. How many rulers does a guy need, please? Right, okay. 
one with groovy grip on and one without. Okay, really fantastic product. If I wanted to use a ruler and a craft knife to trim this down, and I have a normal ruler, this is our Pergamano Stila drawer. When I place that on the parchment, for example, and I want to use a craft knife to cut, it slides around, okay? So therefore, I need to have good pressure applied to the ruler in order to cut along that edge. But because the parchment is parchment, there is that possibility that as I bring the knife towards me, the ruler can slip and I could cut into my work. Really don't want to do that, okay? So now, if I take my ruler, which look, they look exactly the same, that's because they are. The only difference is the groovy grip on the back, okay? So it comes in two A4 sheets and I've just cut a piece down to attach to the back of my ruler, okay? Not sticky, not tacky, it's just got magic properties to it. So now, when I place that on the parchment and I apply a little bit of pressure, look, it doesn't move. So clever. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the lines on the ruler and I'm gonna move out so that the pink line is on the white line of my embossed line. I'm gonna have a look at the lines down going this way across there to make sure that I'm on nice and straight. Then I'm gonna take my craft knife and then I'm just gonna gently run the knife down. You can do it several times. Has that done it? Maybe a little bit more pressure for, there we go. And I've now cut, oh, that doesn't look very straight, does it? Let me try that again. Blimey, there we go. Oh, look at that, dog's dinner. That's how not to do it. <laughs> Let's try, try that one more time, Paul. So we're gonna go along there, gonna take my knife and go to, ah, oh, look at that, much better. Much, much better. Now, if you want to use a guillotine, you can do that. For me, I just, I'm a, a, a knife and ruler person. Okay, so we're now gonna trim this down and I'm using the lines on the ruler to give me my equal spacing. I could, if I wanted to, I could use um, my nested squares to die cut that as well. If there's one that would fit around there, then that would be another possibility. Oh, come on, Paul. Look at that, there we go. Right, so I'm happy with that except for that bit, we'll ignore that. But this is just for demonstration purposes. <laughs> That's my excuse anyway. Right, let's pop that to one side. So I've now got my perfectly cut square knot, and now we're gonna have a look at the brads to attach it, but we need something to attach it to. So I'm going to take, uh, let's have a look, I'm gonna take a petite topper. So I've got Rainbow River to hand, and we're just gonna have a look and sort of decide which one to pop it onto. I quite like this one. I like the pinks and the purples. Yeah, I think this will do, just, just to show you how to do it. Okay, now let's have a look. What am I doing? All right, pop that back in there. Maybe have a look at those a little bit later. So what I want to do now is just to create, I've got options. I can use the brads now to attach it and then trim down, or I can cut my piece of card to size beforehand. It's sort of, it's 50-50. You will have a preference um, of whether you cut to size or whether you trim afterwards. I know Barb likes to trim afterwards, whereas normally I would trim to size, okay? But let's do it this way, just for demonstration purposes. Okie dokie. So in comes super foam. There's my piece that I want to attach my piece of parchment to. So let's have a look, where have I got? Oh, I know exactly where my brads are. 
because they're in my Pergamano storage. Okay, and then look, I've got my luxury bag, so we could go really big and blingy. Let's have a look. Let's take these out. Look, big and blingy. Some, these are the, the luxury brads. But I think I want to keep this nice and delicate. So I'm going to use our um, normal brads. So there's seven different color options. Okay. Right. So do I want to go pastel or do I want to stay neutral? I think I'm going to go black so that we can see a lot better. So I need four little brads. I love these pots because I can just tip out what I want. There we go. Pop that lid back on. And then I know exactly where to find them. Okay. So let's pop those to one side. So I'm going to line up my piece of parchment so that I've got an equalish border around that side. Excuse me, and that side. I'm going to take my one needle bold. Now the bold, the only way that you'll be able to compare what size needle it is, is if you've got the one needle fine next to it. However, let me get the one needle fine just to show because it may help you at home if you have one because there is, where is it? There we go. There is a difference between them. So if I hold those up to the camera, there we go. So the one needle bold, where are we going? Come on, Paul. One needle bold has a bigger dot in the middle and the one needle fine has a smaller dot in the middle. Okay. So bold, fine. So if you're not sure which one you've got, I mean, you can still do it with the one needle fine, but the one needle bold, as it says on the label, will make it a bold a hole. Okay, I'll just put the lid back on that so I can see what's gonna happen. So let's position our parchment. So where do I want to attach my brad? Do I wanna go into the, oh, I can't see. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Let me go back to this camera. And if I bring this over here, right, I just had four days of a director moving the camera. So I've just got to get back into the swing of things. <laughs> okay, so do I want to attach it in the middle of these dots? Do I want to put it inside the border? Or do I want to go to the outside edge? Me personally, I think I want to go right on that corner of that join. So I'm going to hold the one needle bold upright, and I'm going to perforate all the way through. So that needle has gone all the way through the paper, the card, and the tool, and the mat. Okay, so we'll take that, and then I'm going to take my brad, and I'm going to push through the hole I've just made into the foam. Okay. So that's now holding my parchment and card together in one place on the foam. Now I'm gonna come over to the opposite corner. Go to where I've done it on the other side and I'm going to perforate again. So we've created that hole. I'm gonna take the next brad, then push the brad into the foam and the parchment. So that is now held totally secure. So I could go and, okay, Jill, go and get the cake out of the oven. Um, what, you haven't told me, I didn't see what cake it was, so you haven't told me. <laughs> I could do with some cake today. Anything chocolate. Okay, so this is now in place in the two corners. You may think that's all you want to do. You don't, there's no rules to say you've got to go in all four corners. But just for uniformity, let's now come over to this one here. And we'll put another hole there. We'll take the next brad and we'll pop that into there. So that's now the third one. Okay. Then if I come over to the final corner into the same position and pop that through, whoops, try not to open the little legs, 
on the brad and pop that through into back. So, right, so we've now positioned our brads. Our parchment is now on the paper or the card. So then what you do is you gently lift it up, okay, and then you turn it over. And then when you turn it over, you can open up the, the wings on the brad and do the same on this one. Nice and simple. Now, sometimes if I've gone, for example, right, let me show you something else. Let me just open these up so that they don't fall out when I lift the cards up. Okay. So I've opened them up as they're designed to do. Now, sometimes, for example, if I was to go right up to the edge of the parchment, and I then wanted to trim the card down a little bit more, then it's likely that the brads would be too close to the edge. So sometimes what I will do is I'll take the brad and I'll turn it into like um, a right angle. Okay, so you can then do that. So if I wanted to get a little bit closer to that edge, then I'm not gonna sort of jump into the brads. So let's do that on all four of them. I think that's worth showing. Okay. So I've got all of them now facing inwards. Another reason for doing it this way as well is that if I take my tape runner and run along the edge of the card, I'm not going to get bumps when I try and take the tape runner over the top as well. So now I'm going to take my ruler with my groovy grip on. Now look, I've got a bit of a wobble, haven't I? So what I'm gonna have to do is come this side, but I've still got the grids on here so that I can line up the straight ones with the straight edge of the card. So then we're gonna come along and trim down. I'm gonna do the same on this side, a little bit wider. Make sure we're going in the right direction. I reckon. There we go. So that's our piece trimmed down. Okay. Ignore where's that? Ignore that. Ignore that little slip of the knife on that piece there. <laughs> Okay, so we've now created our topper. So it hasn't spoiled the look of your piece. And it now means that we can take our tape runners and we can attach it to a card blank. So let's see what I've got over here. So I reckon a nice little five by five card blank. So we're gonna fold this over and then just go along the edge and then we can attach that to our card. So to do that, I'm gonna use our tape runners. And now, because I've turned the corners of those brads in, I've now got enough space for the tape to go right along the edge. Because if I'd left it going that way, for example, let's just turn it around so you can see. If I'd gone that way, when I was trying to put the tape on, the tape would have jumped over that and potentially ripped the ribbon on the tape runner. So nice and easy. Take a piece of artwork, decide which way you want the card to open, and then press down around the edges. So that's a really nice way of using the, um, the brads to attach a piece of parchment to your card. Okay. Did I explain that okay? I, I can't tell you what I'm talking about. As soon as it comes out of the mouth, it's completely gone. <laughs> the only thing I can remember is asking Jill whether she's got chocolate cake or not. And I don't think she's answered. 
Ah, the chocolate cake's calling. Hello, Jill. <laughs> right. Is it really half past already? Blimey. Speed it up, Mr. Church. Okay. So that is one way of attaching. Another way, which was a way that I used to do it a long time ago, was using our corner punches. So let me bring our lovely little corner punches into play. So we've got four different designs. And this isn't just for parchment. You can take any piece of artwork. I've got a lovely little um, stamped poppet that I've used to frame. And I've used the corner punches to do that. See? So not just for parchment, but any other images that you want to use as well. Okay? So... Let's have a look at the corner punches. Let's take any, mini, miny, mo. I'm going to go for this one. They all do the same. They just have different decorative edges to them. So I'm going to pop those behind me. And then I need another piece of artwork. Right, let's take this one. Do you remember we did this one way back in the beginning of Groovy Tuesday? We used the um, butterfly wreath that came with the starter kit. Oh, I love that. With love. How appropriate, I think, for today. Sending everyone lots of love and hugs. Okay, so I need something to pop it onto, don't I? So if I take some designer paper or parchment, or I can take a plain cardstock, it's entirely up to me. I think I'm going to have a look at Indian Summer paper. Let's see if my favourite one's in here. I bet I've used it. Oh, look, there's so, look, empty pocket, em empty pocket. Mm. Oh, I know, Toscana has got some lovely oranges in. Uh, dum, 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 dum. Toscana. See, like, I label TO for Toscana paper. So I know exactly when they're on the shelf, for example, which one I need to pick up. So let's have a look in Ah, oh, I reckon that would work. Nice. Yes, I like that. What about the other side? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go for this one. Okay. Look, I like this one so much that when I've cut bits out that I haven't used, I've put them back in there. I love this one. Okay. So in a way, it's a similar principle to the brad. You know how we attach the parchment to the card and then trimmed off the excess. You need to do that on the same for this because the patterns vary as we looked at earlier. And I can't say to you that if this was a five by five, then your piece of card needed to be five and a half because it will vary from design to design. Okay, so what you're gonna do first, let's decide, do we wanna go on the light side? See, that's quite nice. Or do we wanna go on the wild side? Oh, I like that. Oh, I don't know, where am I gonna attach it? I think, we're, right, let's keep it simple, Paul. We're gonna go in this top right hand, left hand corner. <coughs> So the first thing you need to do is you take your paper and you place it into the punch. I wonder if I can get a nicer view on this one. Okay, so there's my punch. I take my paper and I just push it into the corner. And once you push it into the corner, you press down on the handle and you get that beautiful decorative corner okay then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of parchment and I'm going to weave it underneath that one and bring it up onto that one so you can see now this is a very very slim border to this particular design so I'm going to hold my parchment in place I'm going to take my 
Pergamano ruler. And I reckon that sort of distance is probably the width of the metal bar on the edge of the ruler. So I'm going to place that there. So let's have a look. Where's the, there's the parchment. Yeah, you can see that better in the darker area. And I'm going to use the lines again as my guide to make sure that it's nice and straight. And because I've got my groovy grip on there, I know it's not going to slip. So then we're going to trim down the edge of the paper. Okay, so that's now given me one side. Then I'm going to repeat that process along the bottom. So again, I reckon it's a Definitely the width of there. Use my ruler as a guide. There we go. And trim down. You could, if you want to, if you don't like using a craft rifle, you could, if you choose to, um, use a pen and use a guillotine then to cut your piece to size. So now all we're going to do is pop it in. So you could just do alternate corners. You don't have to do all four sides. It's entirely up to you. And what I love about this is that if you haven't got the pressure in your finger, you can just take the flat of your hand to apply the pressure. Okay, so that's now given us our four pieces. Now, one of the questions we get asked quite a lot is, what happens to all the bits? All the bits that you're, you've um, punched out are all being collected in the bottom. And you see here, you've got this little um, ridged arrow, or it actually looks like a Christmas tree. All you do is you just turn it upside down, take your thumb or your finger, press onto that ridge, and it slides open. And then what you do is you just empty out all the waste. Okay. Then you take the base again, and it has two little ridges on the side that slot into the two little ridges within the base. So you pop that back in place, slide it forward, and it clicks, and you're good to go again. So that's how you empty those, okay? So let's have a look. Let's see if this worked. <laughs> so going to pop under there we're going to go under there under there and then under there and that is how you use the corner punches okay now if you find that when you have trimmed off the side or you've cut your piece of paper to size and when you put it in, it's a little bit tight, for example. So sometimes I've gone a little bit close, and what happens is you get sort of like, it doesn't fit completely flush. You get sort of like that buckling effect. Then what I've done to allow for that is that when I've done this piece, you see I've got a, a little outer frame on it. I could just, it'll only be a sliver. I can just trim off a sliver on either side and then no one will know any different. And then it will sit nice and flush. Okay. So now you can use this for photos. You can use it for your parchment. You can use it for your card toppers, for your stamped images. It just adds a lovely little decorative corner, a nice way of attaching. And if I take a white card, for example, and pop that underneath. Okay, let's just grab one of those. Let's pop that underneath. There we go. And that sits perfectly on that card. So again, what I would do, I take my tape runner, run. Now, if you was doing this as say a photo and you wanted to swap out the photos, then when you're attaching your glue, you stay within the corners. Okay, because if you go right across, then you're going to stick the parchment down at the same time or the photo. So therefore, if you want to be able to remove this, if you want to recycle, for example, then just put the glue on the middle sections. So 
that's another way of attaching parchment. Okay. That was nice and easy, wasn't it? Wish everything worked out as easy as that every time. Okay, so we've got that. So we've done the brads. We've done the corner punches. So let's have a look. Should we have a look at a die? Because if you've got our basic shapes, the squares, the circles, um, the rectangles, or any of the Pico dies, you can use that to create an aperture within the card. So, for example, if I take this one here, let's have a look, wrong button, take this one here. If I made this card or left the parchment a little bit bigger, then what I could do is take one of, say, for example, because it's a circle, I would automatically take our nested circle dies. Onto, so I cut the aperture within a piece of card and attach it over the top. So here's one that I made earlier. That's where that paper's gone. I knew I'd used it. So we've created the aperture. And what that means is that it's all attached from behind so you can't see the glue. Okay. Now, at the weekend, we launched these fantastic um, doodle dies that Barbara designed. And apologies if you bore to tears with the, how they work. The main die, the frame it frames, is one big die, okay? And when you run it through your machine, what happens is you get 10 individual frames. So for example, what you could do is you could take one of those frames, where's my, you could take one of those frames and just pop it around the outside. And what that would do is, so if I attached it to this particular design, a little bit of glue on the back of these, do that, and then when I turn it over, I could then put glue on the back of that and it's not going to show through the parchment. Okay. But another way, you know, we were talking about the, the aperture style, for example. So let's pop that back in its bag. This is my little library of um, shapes. So the other dies, what they do is they create an aperture within the card. Okay, so for example, I've got this, I love this beautiful scroll. Okay, so what I could do now, this could be, see this is where we were talking about adding that extra element. Let me just bring that card back in. Where is it? Is it hiding under here? Where did, here it is, it's over here. So say for example, I've done this beautiful card here. I don't know if the, the circles go that big. Let's have a look. This is the scalloped one. So for example, look, I could take that and pop that around the side as well. Doesn't that look, it helps you go it away. Doesn't that look nice? So you would have a little bit more thought on your design that you create in the middle but you can finish it off with one of the um, frame it's. Okay, so if we have a look now then at, oh, go back in there. Okay, so let's have a look at this one here. So I've taken one of the dies, which is this one. I've placed it on my car blank and run it through my machine. So that has now created a beautiful decorative frame. But in order to attach the parchment, I need to create an aperture within that. So if I take my nested circles, because the dies have been designed to work with that, and let's have a look which one. That one's too big. That one will work. But I want to create a bit more of a border. So maybe I'll go into the next one, I reckon. Let me have a look. This is a piece of artwork. I know you can't. It's just the reef. But is that going to be big enough? See, that's a little bit, but it fits within that design near on. Okay. So all I've done, I'm, I've just grabbed previous bits of artwork. Let's try this one. This is smaller. Okay. Let's go with this one. I know you can't really see, but you will do in a minute. Honestly, trust me. I'm not a doctor, but let's have a look. I reckon, yes. Okay. So then what you would do is you would position that in the middle, take a little bit of low-tack tape to hold it in 
place. See, for me, these dies just add that beautiful decorative element. And when we do this one, you'll see, apart from the fact, obviously, the, the image isn't really coloured in, that you will get the overall effect. So basically, this is just another way of creating an aperture within a card to use to attach your parchment to. So let's just run this through the machine. And um, while we're doing that, multitasking, make sure it doesn't move, make the sound of the machine. Do, 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 do. So when you look at these different um, aperture frame it, you can see you've got beautiful designs and it will work with lots of your different pieces. If you want to go small, if you just want to do a little tag or something like that, then this is a perfect opportunity when you get your dies home. So I know many, many, many of you, and you can do this in the square. And the only reason I'm not showing the square is because I'm about to place an order this morning for more. And as soon as we know when they're coming back in stock, we will let you know. They, it's sort of the demand for the, the squares were just overwhelmed us. It really, really did. And we had massive stock. Okay. So now, oh, no. get rid of all of this. Okay. So let's pop those to one side. So now I've created the aperture within my card. So what I can do now is I can take my piece of parchment. Now, just for speed and for ease where's my i'm just going to do this really roughly but at home you would take a die let's have i'm going to draw <laughs> this is really let me just take a pencil i just want to get a rough guide because i need it just to be within that area great circle so all i'm going to do is just you would use a die to do this because you really don't want to see this mess in the back. <laughs> oh, dear. See, I'm showing you how to do it and how not to do it. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take our tape runner. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And I want to put it on the front. So we're just going to go around the edge of our perfectly cut out circle. See, that's why you need the dies. So you can cut out <laughs> a circle. Oh, right, okay. What way is it gonna be? So we're gonna do that, that way. So that will go in there. Okay. So ignore the, the horrible inside of there. But what I'm saying is that when you now take that, you can see Obviously, you can't see the glue. But what I could now do is take the lovely framelits. Oh, I've got two sets of this one. I see like this one. So I can then start to, oh, look at that. And then depending on the size of the card. Yeah. See, for me, that's just gone from from that, which looks absolutely lovely, it has the effect, but the actual frame's a little bit flat, would you say? But by doing that, it changes it. And then what I would do, I would take the same designer paper, which is Amazonia, and pop that as a liner on the inside of the card, or cut another circle that fitted inside that circle, to hide my perfect cutting, okay? But to me, doesn't that look, if you were selling that card, I mean, that's a beautiful card, so depending on where you are, I'm gonna say £2.50, okay? £2.50, you'll never get back the time and effort that you put into that card, but let's just keep it simple, £2.50, that one, Three pounds, four pounds, a little bit more if it was done properly. So you can see that if you are selling cards, and by all means, do sell your cards. Um, because again, it gives you that return on what you've invested on. 
So, um, so that's another way of showing you how to attach a card, the parchment to the card. And again, you, this doesn't have to be parchment. This will work. Everything I've shown you so far will work not only with parchment, but it will work with card, with paper, with stamped images, with predefined um, toppers. It's just the finishing touches. Okay, so let's pop that back in there so I don't lose that. Okay, so that came from there. And for me, the designer papers, they just make such a difference. Okay, so we've gone, let's do a little bit of a recap. Where have I put everything? Right. So, we've got brads. We've got corner punches. We've then got aperture dies to create and attach. Okay. So another way of attaching is a tape runner. I mean, you've got the perga glue as well. That works perfectly well, but you have to hide it behind something. Now, I've got a piece of designer parchment. So this is the back and it's quite dark. Okay. What I would always suggest, if you want to use the tape runners to attach your parchment directly to the card with a tape runner, is that you take a piece of an off cut that you've done, okay, put the glue on, the, um, on that scrap piece, and then stick it onto another piece of card that um, you're going to attach your finished piece to, and press it down. And if it doesn't show through, then you're good to go. Okay, so let's take another car blank. But have I got a big enough car blank for this piece? Will that fit on there? A little bit tight. Okay, let's. Uh, there's. Is that a car blank over? Oh, I know where the car blanks are. They are on the floor, out of the way. Think, what was that one? Let's have a look. Yes, this will do it. Okay. All right. There we go. Perfect. So I haven't got a piece of this to test. So I'm 50 50 on this one, but it's just to show what you can do. So tape runner again. Now, on the back, you're going to go up to the front. I wonder if I can come in on. This one. Look. Okay. So you're going to go up to the edge and then you're going to gently go along the edge of the parchment. There's no rush, especially on parchment. You really don't want to go fast on parchment. Okay. And then you're going to get to the end. Uh, when you get to the end, you're going to flick forward and it releases. Then I'm going to start there. I don't want to overlap it. Now, if you're worried about going wonky, you can take the edge of a ruler and use a ruler as a guide, okay? But just go along the edge there. Zing. Ooh, definitely going on a wonk there. I mean, everything's going to be on a wonk today. So, take our car blank. Fold it in half. Then, two finger trick, as Barb often says. Over the top, excuse my head if it blinds you with the shine. And press down. Can't see it. I'll bring it on this camera. There we go. So you can't see where the tape is. So really, it's a game changer. The tape runners on parchment is a game changer for me. I've used many tape runners over the past um, attaching parchment, and you always get to see, even on some of the darker parchment. Okay, so that's another option, a fantastic tape runners. 
And then the final option I wanted to show you, which is what I did many, many years ago, is the folding technique. Okay, so I've got this little piece here. And what we're going to do, it's that sort of, it's a, I'm not going to trim off the excess. What I am going to do, if I find, I'm going to go with uh, a number two tool. So my wooden tool that comes in the starter kit. Okay, I'm going to turn it over. See, another benefit of the Pergamano ruler is I can see exactly where my design is. I'm going to take my number two. I'm actually going to go along the, the other side of it. So I don't need the steel edge. So let's have a look. Let's go over to about there. And then all I'm going to do is on the hard mat. I'm not on a soft mat. And all I'm going to do is run the tool along several times. Okay. And what it's done, it's created a crease. So then I'm going to gently fold that over. Do my finger and thumb. And then press down. Once you've done this, there's no going back. The only other way of rectifying this is to trim that off and use brads. Okay, so I've got that one there. So I'm going to repeat the process on this side. Okay, so I'll do it by eye in relation to the spacing. I reckon a little bit more over that way. And then just a couple of times, you're not, I'm using the number two, I'm not using the number one, because if I use the number one, it could potentially um, rip the parchment. So the number two, and it creates that crease. Okay. Gently tease it between your finger and your thumb. And then once you're happy, then commit by rubbing down with your finger. So this has now created my fold. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to take, this could be paper, it could be card, whatever you want it to be. So I reckon, just for, look, if I go with that, yeah, that'll do. So now what I want to do is to get a guide on how big a piece this needs to be. So if I pop that on there so i'm working let's do it on the front it'll be easier for you to see so if i line that up on there i'm going up to the edge okay and then i'm going to take a pen or a pencil let's have a look pen or a pencil oh come on why have you got yellow pencils okay so take it up to the edge and then I'm going to mark with my pencil along the edge there. Okay. And then I'm going to turn the card round. Let's do it on this bit. Do it on there. Up to the edge again. And a pencil line just down there. And for this, I am going to, just for speed, I'm going to use my guillotine, which is hiding under here okay just first of all and what i'm going to do I, don't know, I won't be able to show you no it won't show because the handle's in the way where i drew that pencil line see that pencil line there okay what i want to do is rather than cut just to the other side of it i want to just come in a little bit more so that when I trim off the excess, when I trim off the excess, which was this bit here, you can see I've come just inside, just inside the line. So I'm not going on the line or close to it. And then I'm going to repeat the same. Yeah, maybe we'll do it. Let's do it on this one, maybe. Okay. Let's do it this way. So there's the pencil line that I created which is right on the edge of my guillotine. What I want to do now is just push it away 
So there's a little sliver that I'm going to trim off as well. And trim. So let's pop that one over there. So now what I can do, I can take my piece of card and I can slide that in behind. So that is now another way of, so I can now put glue behind there and on here. I would glue this down onto there now once I was happy with it and then put glue around all four edges and attach it to my card. Now, if you find when you cut this piece of card or paper down, see, I, it's not perfect. I've got a little bit of a, a bulge, so to speak. So what I would do is I'd take it out and just slim another little piece off the edge, okay? So it's adaptable. The only bit that you can't adapt is when you score the lines to create the fold because it's parchment. And once you've folded it and you've creased it, that's it. So if I'd made a mistake on that, then I would have to trim off that and then look at an alternative, whether it be the corner punches or some brads or a die aperture card. Okay. Can't believe that's an hour already. <laughs> I survived. So... Thank you very much for joining me. So what have we got coming up? I said to you, we've got lots coming up this week. So on Thursday, we're back in the shack with Barb at 10 o'clock. I'll be in the room keeping you company as well. And then on Friday evening, it's pajama party time. Seven o'clock on Facebook Live with the lovely Linda Williams and the bubbly Barbara Gray. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, I haven't seen the piece, but I just know, I. I can, if Linda's done the artwork, or I mean, Barbara's done the artwork, I know it's going to be stunning. And so it's Pajama Party Craft Along at 7 p.m. on Friday evening on Facebook Live. We've got on our website, if you go to a moment of clarity on the Clarity website, there's a section dedicated to that. There's a list of everything that you will need. Linda's sent that through and we've created a, a download so you can print it off, tick to make sure you've got everything good to go. So I hope you've enjoyed today. I know I have. These little bits and pieces like this, I think are very, very useful, um, especially when it comes to parchment craft, because it's finding ways of attaching it so that it doesn't ruin it. So we had a look at um, brads, we looked at aperture dies, we looked at the corner punches, we looked at the wraparound, and we looked at the tape round. So there's five there, which are all achievable and will all work for different types of parchment that you've done. The tape runner may not work on all of them. It definitely wouldn't work on the clear parchment, so that's why I'd have to use one of the other methods. So I hope you've enjoyed that. As I say, I will see you later in the week in the room with Barb on Thursday and then again Friday night. And then don't forget, next Tuesday, school's back again with the lovely Linda Williams again in the Pergamano Summer School. And again, all of the information, if it's the first you've heard of it, where have you been? Um, you can check out our website and we've got a section dedicated specifically to the Pergam Marno Summer School. So thank you to the lovely Lucy for being in the room. Room? For being in the room, even. Um, seeing their name keep popping up, answering all the questions. So enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm going to go and look for some chocolate or chocolate cake. I'm sure I've got some chocolate in my drawer somewhere. So enjoy the day and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care now. Bye-bye.